Hello, good afternoon, everyone. So one of the most common questions that I get is, Louise, I've tried everything. I've tried working really hard at the gym, cutting back my calories, and I'm still not seeing progress. The diets I used to do didn't work. And the, the diets that used to work are now not working. What am I doing wrong? How, how can I lose weight? That's one of the most common questions that I get. And the answer to that question is more often than not, we need to address the underlying causes of this stubborn weight, which means we need to balance your hormones because it's your hormones, stress hormones, sex hormones, thyroid hormones, blood sugar hormones, um, and various other hormones. It's your hormones that really control whether you are burning fat or storing fats. So that means that the second most common question I get is how do you balance hormones? And I posted a list um, yesterday all about the things that we need to do to balance your hormones. And if you saw that list, then it would probably raise more questions than it's answered than it answers. And that's kind of one of those things with nutrition and health is that the more you know, the more you read and research, the more questions you have. It doesn't, it doesn't really uh, fill the gaps in your knowledge. It just makes you aware of how many gaps in your knowledge there are. So the things on that list were, um, I haven't got the list in front of me, but it was things like we need to uh, fix your gut. We need to, uh, we need to fix your adrenals. We need to correct deficiencies, reduce inflammation, support your detoxification pathways, um, and possibly a couple of other things, balance your blood sugars. So lots of things that we need to do, but lots of areas that we need to address to enable hormones to be balanced. And we're going to go through each of these things in more detail and talk to you about each of these things. But if hormones are imbalanced, then what that means is that there's a problem in one of three or four key areas. So there's either a problem with the production of those hormones, which might mean you're not absorbing your nutrients properly. You, you might not be digesting your food very efficiently. Maybe there are imbalances in the gut with the bacteria and the yeasts that may be limiting how well you're absorbing. Maybe there are problems with your stomach acid or your digestive enzymes, again, which might be limiting your absorption of nutrients, which can cause deficiencies. Um, not just in the vitamins, but also in things like protein and fats and various other things. So if there's any issue with that absorption and digestion of your food and nutrients, then that can cause problems with the production of hormones because we've got to make our hormones out of something. And our hormones are made out of fats, they're made out of protein and various vitamins and minerals. So that's the first problem that can occur. And then let's say that that's working okay and you've produced your hormones. Then the next problem that can occur, depending on the group of hormones, is there can be issues with the activation and the conversion of those hormones. With some hormones, we, well, actually with quite a few of our hormones, we, we make like a the first hormone and then it gets converted into the next hormone this happens with both the thyroid hormones and the um sex hormones so they they kind of the first step needs to be balanced so that the next step can happen properly and those conversion issues can occur because of inflammation it can occur because of stress deficiencies uh, issues in the gut again issues in the liver so in the gut and the liver is where we convert our thyroid hormones so if there's any issues going on there and that can impact the thyroid function as well so there can be issues in the second area where we're not activating or converting our hormones properly another problem can arise where you're 
um, hormones may be going to where they need to go. They might get to your cells and then they might not actually be able to activate your cells. So if you think about a lock and key mechanism, if you think that the um, hormone is the key and your cell is the lock, or at least the receptor on your cells are the lock, your hormone has to fit into that receptor to make it work properly. Sometimes that doesn't happen because the receptors are damaged um, and that can be because of inflammation it can be because of something called oxidative stress which is where there is damage happening to the cells so there can be this reduced sensitivity to certain hormones so that's a problem that can occur another problem is that when once we've used our hormones we've produced them they've done their job we need to get rid of them so once once they're used, they go to the liver and they are detoxed. Now, there can be problems that arise here. It can be a genetic thing, although there's lots that we can do to support your genetic coding to make things work more efficiently. So it's just because it's genetic doesn't mean that's destined to always happen. Um, but there can be issues with if you've got a high toxic load, which could be coming from things that you're consuming or from stress that's occurring internally, uh, from imbalances in the gut and various other things. If there's a high toxic load, then your liver can have quite a lot of work to do, or quite a burden to, to get through. And that can mean that those hormones aren't detoxed very efficiently. And rather than them kind of going, going down the plug hole, they can go and recirculate round and round your system rather than being detoxed. And then another problem that can occur is once you've detoxed your hormones, they go into your gut, they're moved from your liver through your bile into your gut. And once they get there, then there's more problems that can occur because, again, certain imbalances in gut bacteria can result in your hormones being reactivated and reabsorbed. So that can be a source of imbalance. Um, and also if your digestion is, is very sluggish and you're not eliminating, you're not having a bowel movement at least every day, then you're not going to be moving those hormones out very quickly. And again, there's a risk that they could be reabsorbed. So as you can see, when someone asks me a question about how do I balance my hormones, there's really not a simple answer because there's all these areas that we have to support or we need to identify where there might be a kink in the chain. And this isn't even an exhaustive list. This is to do with the way we produce and eliminate hormones, but there's loads of other factors that can contribute to imbalanced hormones like blood sugars fluctuating all over the place, high stress levels, sleep deprivation, over-exercising, under eating, loads of things that cause internal stress that can dis, um, imbalance your hormones. So it's a complicated picture, but the foundation is always in really cleaning up your diet if you haven't already, um, in that we want to make sure that we're taking out as much junk as possible and basing your diet around good quality protein and lots of fresh vegetables. Um, the reason why I say if you haven't done already is because the vast majority of the women that we talk to have already spent a lot of time working on their diet, working on exercise and cleaning things up. And often they have got those foundations roughly in place, but they need that more individualization. They need to really dig down and work out what's going on here you know why am I not absorbing properly why am I not um you know, why have I got deficiencies when I eat a pretty good diet and one reason for that can be because the food that we eat is very depleted of nutrients and even if you're eating a really good well-rounded fresh diet you can still have deficiencies because 
the food that we eat is very depleted from the land being over farmed and artificial fertilizers and food traveling a lot a long way before we eat it and becoming depleted a lot of food is picked before it's even ready before it's ripe and then artificially ripened so the food that we eat these days is way 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 depleted in nutrients compared to what we ate 50 to 100 years ago so that means that sometimes even the best diet still there are deficiencies um, and again you may not be absorbing those nutrients very well so we need to make sure that the digestive system is actually working properly as well so hopefully this gives you a better insight as to why it's really difficult for me to answer the question how do I balance my hormones uh, unless I've actually you know got your medical history your symptoms and test results in front of me then that's the only way that I can really thoroughly answer that question for you so if you want to know more about balancing hormones and and getting those foundations in place and things that you can do to really take your first steps towards balancing hormones and getting rid of cravings and taking an approach where you're not restricting, you're not you know, cutting calories and instead you're focusing on nourishing your body because what we want to do is we want to nourish your body so that it has everything it needs to work efficiently which will help support your metabolism and get you losing weight rather than starving you to weight loss which is always going to be a short-term approach and is never going to get you lasting results so if you want to know more about this more nourishing approach and addressing imbalances to get you to your weight loss goals so that you can feel amazing and confident and healthy in the long term, then you can now watch our um, webinar, Stop Dieting and Start Seeing Results. You can now access that uh, online and you can watch it right now if you want to. It is available for instant access now. So I'm going to drop the link to that into the comments. And all you have to do is pop in the email address and then we'll, uh, you'll be able to watch it straight away. So check that out if you want to know more about balancing your hormones. Thank you so much for watching. If this has been helpful and interesting, then please do give it a like as that tells Facebook that it's been helpful and shows it to more people. Thanks again, and I'll see you really soon.